You are watching ABC 7 News at 5.30. Welcome back. Tonight, Manatee County School District is talking about a teacher shortage that may leave your child without an assigned teacher when the next school year begins. ABC 7's Erica Jackson joins us live tonight from Manatee County to share why there are so many openings in that district. Erica, what can you tell us tonight? Jacqueline, good evening. Able Elementary is just one of many schools with several positions to fill. District wide, there are nearly 300 teacher vacancies that need to be filled in the next few months. I feel like our district office is pretty much disconnected in many ways from what's happening in the classroom and at the individual schools. A lot has changed in Manatee County since Linda Boone started working for the school district 37 years ago. There doesn't seem to be the longevity of teachers at a particular school like there was when I started teaching. The school district says recent retirees like Boone add to the number of openings in the county along with resignations and contracts that were not renewed. Now it's searching for nearly 400 new employees, 280 of those being instructional positions. We're looking for passionate, dedicated, hardworking teachers who love kids. But some teachers with those qualifications are choosing to work elsewhere. Our district is wide enough that you could drive within the district as long as it would take you to get to another district, whether, whether it be Sarasota or St. Pete. One reason, the pay. According to the most recent records available online, Sarasota County teachers made an average salary of $54,000 in 2016 to 2017. That same year, Manatee County teachers averaged just $46,000. A recent tax referendum in Manatee will give teachers at least a $6,000 raise, but Boone isn't convinced that will be enough to keep current employees. I think there's still people are wondering, will that money really go to the teachers? And maybe the money isn't enough. The district hopes to fill most positions by the first day for teachers on August 6th and expects to do more hiring before the school year ends. Because of Manatee County's growth, um, it, it will create more need. Now, Jacqueline, those 400 openings do not include the positions the district need to fill for the three new schools expected to open in East Manatee County in fall 2019. Those openings are expected to be posted and the, the hiring process is expected to be underway for those in spring of 2019. Reporting live in Manatee County, Erica Jackson, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Okay, Erica, thank you. Well, just over a billion dollars is at stake for Manatee County. Commissioners are meeting today to discuss the new budget, and it could mean some big changes for the county. Those changes include the addition of 12 new sheriff's deputies, their equipment, salaries, and health care. The proposed budget would also provide funding for 18 positions in the school resource officers program. County commissioners will be meeting in July to make a decision on next year's budget. An update now on erosion at Lido Beach. The Sarasota City Commission approving a resolution asking the state to grant more funding for Lido Beach renourishment projects while expressing the city's willingness to match state money to rebuild parts of the shoreline. Commissioners declared a local state of emergency last week after storms took away more sand. State officials say they plan to resolve that issue. There is no word yet on how much funding the city could get from the state or federal government to fix that problem. Well, certainly a good day to head to the beach if you were able to. It was very hot, very humid. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Yeah, that's the nice thing about right now, Jacqueline. Temperatures in the water right now, 83 degrees, 82 degrees, depending upon where you are. And with the breeze coming in from the Gulf, it keeps things a little bit milder right near the coast, but just a couple of miles inland, upper 80s to low 90s today. We had a few brief showers, very brief because of the dry air in the upper levels of the atmosphere. These storms start to build up into that layer and all of a sudden they shut down here along the west coast of Florida. We had one lone shower near Bayshore Gardens earlier. Some heavier weather to the east. There's a little bit more moisture bottled up along the east coast, so those storms are having a tendency to hold on a little bit better. Pretty strong, too, producing quite a bit of lightning there. Until we get away from this west wind, we're not going to see those afternoon and evening storms come our way. But uh, that shower that was near Bayshore Gardens and Whitfield Estates has since moved on and dissipated. One lone shower, very small, out there southwest of Venice right now. Could see a pop-up shower here and there throughout the evening, but generally dry conditions are anticipated. Currently, we have a few clouds, but still partly cloudy skies and feels like temperature has actually gone up a little bit. It's 98. That's what it feels like now. 86 degrees on the temperature. We have a west wind at 12. 
and the dew point high at 78. Again, it doesn't get much higher than that. Uh, the dry air that you see in place here, this is the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. Uh, dry air showing up right here across west central Florida. As I mentioned, showers try to build up into it and you get a hold of that dry air and then kind of shuts them down for a bit. But this is an upper level low uh, spinning in our direction. Now this will get close to us tomorrow, bringing with it a much better chance for a few showers and even an isolated thunderstorm or two. That rain chance jumps up to 50% for us tomorrow. More on that forecast coming up in just a few. Jacqueline. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Bob. A disgraced movie mogul Harvey Weinstein is back in court today where he pleaded not guilty to three felony charges. ABC's Linda Lopez gives us a look at what happened in that courtroom. What you plead, Harvey? Harvey Weinstein arriving at New York Supreme Court today to formally hear the charges against him. Two counts of rape and one count of a criminal sex act. In a packed courtroom, Weinstein appeared alongside his attorney, Ben Brothman, and when asked how he pleaded to the indictment, quietly said not guilty. Weinstein has denied all charges of non-consensual sex. Brothman said his team plans to mount a vigorous defense. He has been falsely accused of rape, and I intend to uh, help him uh, win this case fair and square on the merits or the lack of merits. Weinstein is accused by two women in this case. One, who remains anonymous, has accused him of rape. The second, Lucia Evans, says Weinstein forced her to perform a sex act on him. Outside the courthouse, Brofman saying he may file a motion to split the case in two, saying the rape and criminal sex act charges may require two separate trials. He also said the case presents unique issues that may be the subject of future motions, but he didn't give details as to what those might I be. Think, uh, today is the first day of this uh, process. Um, uh, we begin our fight now. Uh, we will fight this case in the courtroom. Also in that packed courtroom today, attorney Gloria Allred, who is not representing any of the accusers in this case, but said she was there on behalf of her many clients who are accusers. Weinstein is not due back into court until September 20th. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. The family of Parkland school shooting survivor and gun control activist David Hogg was the target of a swatting incident today. Swatting is when someone reports a fake emergency to 911 in order to have armed officers arrive at a location. The caller in this case told police that there was a hostage situation at Hogg's home. The fire department responded to the residents and discovered that that call was a prank. Hogg was not home at the time of the incident. A new way of verification that could change how you protect yourself against fraud. ABC 7's Alan Cohn joins us with what's coming up tonight at 7. Alan? Jacqueline, could the fingerprint protect against fraud? Some credit companies are using biometrics as a way of the future and it will stop hackers from obtaining your information, at least temporarily. The idea is using biometrics as authentication with a fingerprint or eye or face scan could take the place of a signature or PIN number, but until a biometric reader is more secure and less expensive, local cyber security experts say it won't work. The, the FBI and law enforcement usages of biometrics is an exact scan of, say, your fingerprint. So if I stole that, I could actually create a new fingerprint or a new finger that looks like yours. Coming up at 7, we'll hear from experts about why biometrics aren't as secure as you might think and the story of a woman who's been a victim of identity theft more than once. Jacqueline, back to you. Wow, okay, thank you. Uh, Alan, we'll talk to you soon. Coming up, a major controversy today between President Trump and the Philadelphia Eagles, plus how tech giants are debuting products to help people battle smartphone addiction. We'll be right back. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Finish Upgrade event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to a premium finish. Schedule your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or go to CaliforniaClosets.com. Judy here, I think. I think hospice was a tremendous source of support for her. Absolutely. With Jennifer and Kimberly and Liza's constant contact with us, coming in, just knowing that there was someone with knowledge there to back us up, to answer our questions, it made a world of difference. If you think it's hot outside, just wait until you see even hotter savings inside. 
only at Ruggs as Art Hot Summer Saving Sale event will you find the lowest prices on a vast selection of stunning rugs, furniture accents, and accessories. This special event only happens once a year, so hurry in before the best selections are gone. The Hot Summer Savings event ends soon, so don't miss out on the best prices ever. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. TrueStage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. And even if you're on a fixed income, prices fit your budget, starting at less than 32 cents a day. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. And with no medical tests or health questions, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through TrueStage. Call 1-800-842-7189. Now. There's never been a better time to call California Closets. Now, during our Finish Upgrade event, save up to 15% when you upgrade to a premium finish. Schedule your free design consultation today. Visit our showroom or go to CaliforniaClosets.com. President Trump hosting a so-called Celebration of America today after canceling an event honoring the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. President Trump citing the dispute over the national anthem when he called off that event after the majority of players declined to attend the White House celebration. ABC's Arlette Signs has that story from Washington. With his hand over his heart, President Trump belted out the national anthem, but notably missing at the White House, the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles. This is a beautiful, big celebration. Actually, to be honest, it's even bigger than we had anticipated. The night before their planned visit, the president called an audible, telling the Eagles, you're not invited. That decision came after the majority of the team decided not to attend the traditional White House ceremony honoring the Super Bowl champs. The Eagles are the ones that tried to change their commitment at the 11th hour, and the president frankly thinks that the fans deserve better than that, and therefore we changed the ceremony. The White House says the team planned on sending only a tiny handful of representatives. The president cited the national anthem dispute as a reason for his cancellation, even though in 2017, none of the Eagles players knelt during the anthem. One of the biggest names in sports says future championship teams will face the same decision about an invite from President Trump. It's typical of him. I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I know no matter who wins this series, no, one's, no one wants to invite anyway, so it won't be Golden State or Cleveland going. Some of the players who declined the president's invitation had planned on attending community events in the D.C. area instead. We're told the players are working on rescheduling those community events for some time this summer. Arlette Signs, ABC News, Washington. Now your ABC 7 first alert weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist. Well, the Lakewood Ranch webcam showing a little bit more clouds around today. They had a little warmer temperatures, too. Uh, temperatures there were uh, reaching into the upper 80s, although the beaches into the low to mid 80s today. But upper 80s, and it feels like at this hour, right around 97, 98 degrees uh, right there at Lakewood Ranch due to that high heat content as well as the moisture content at the lower levels of the atmosphere. And that really causes our relative humidity to go up much higher. Now we do have a little piece of energy right here. This is a little low pressure area which will eventually move in our direction, get close to us tomorrow and be in place and bring our rain chances up a little bit. We had one lone shower pop up and we may see another one pop up here and there through this evening, but uh, they'll be very isolated. You see it kind of worked its way through Bayshore Gardens, El Conquistador, and then uh, faded away near Whitfield Avenue. Uh, that was around just 
just briefly though, just for about 45 minutes as it moved off to the east. Some bigger storms well east of our area pushing off toward the east coast right now. Not much happening in the Gulf of Mexico. And as I alluded to, it looks like most areas will stay dry through this evening. So if you have any plans outdoors or drive, uh, should not be a big factor. A different story tomorrow though, especially in the morning and throughout the afternoon. By the evening hours, most of that energy should be east of our region. And that means uh, we'll see our rain chances lessen up somewhat in the uh, late afternoon and evening. Well, here's a look at the temperatures now across the Atlantic Basin, and you can see still pretty cool out here in the eastern portion of the Atlantic, all the way off the northeast coast. Temperatures in the mid 70s there. These are running about, I'd say, six to eight degrees uh, cooler than they were last year at this time, and that's one of the reasons why we don't think we'll see as many uh, strong hurricanes around this season. But uh, notice the temperatures here in the Western Caribbean and the Western Gulf of Mexico still into the mid 80s there, and that's the breeding ground for storms pretty much right there. Uh, the GFS has been hinting at something coming up uh, next week, but really no definite uh, signs of that right now. Uh, this is again a favorite area. If storms develop in the Western Gulf of Mexico, they typically travel toward Texas and Louisiana. Western Caribbean have a tendency to move more toward Florida, so we'll keep an eye on that area. And then again, to the east of the state, there's an also, also an area uh, that uh, favors development during the month of June. Well, the forecast winds will stay out of the west for us at four tomorrow and tomorrow looks like Thursday as well. That means temperatures will stay unseasonably warm for overnight lows. Uh, we had an 80 degree temperature yesterday morning and this morning 80 degrees as well. The day planner looks like this tomorrow. So a, a few showers around, even an isolated thunderstorm possible in the morning. We'll have a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day. High temperatures will still top out into the upper 80s despite the presence of a few showers and a few clouds. 86 right now. West winds at 12 makes it feel like 98 degrees out there. The high today did warm right at the average of 88, but there's that low 80 degrees well above the normal, which is 71. The average low at 71 degrees and no rainfall report. So far, we're starting off on a dry note for June. Typically, our rainy season doesn't get going until mid June, so we'll wait for that. But I think a, a little bit more stormy pattern uh, comes in to, uh, next week. As far as that piece of energy goes, some showers to the northwest, really good chance of that happening during the morning and then scattered showers in the morning for us throughout the early afternoon. And then most of it is the focusing onto the east coast. We have a little low pressure area trying to pop up there too in the mid levels of the atmosphere, which will bring us a chance for showers as well on Thursday. So a scattered storm or two in the morning, not out of the question for boaters. Winds out of the west at 10 knots and seas will be running one to two feet. The extended forecast and good chance for showers and a few thunderstorms scattered about a 40% chance on Thursday still there and temperatures remaining in the mid to upper 80s all the way through the next seven days. The weekend, not a washout, but we'll see a few scattered showers and a few thunderstorms, um, mainly in the afternoon, but we could see a few isolated showers as well during the morning on Saturday and Sunday. Jacqueline? All right, thank you, Bob. Time now to check your first alert traffic for the drive home in Bradenton. The northbound lanes of US 301 is slow going around the intersection at State Road 70. Some congestion heading south on 301 near 63rd Avenue East as well. Well, have you ever heard of nomophobia? It's a new term meaning no mobile phone phobia. With tech addiction on the rise, Reed Binion tells us how device manufacturers are trying to implement features to help users disconnect. Some apps demand more of our attention than we might even realize. Apple debuted screen time at its Worldwide Developers Conference, a new iPhone feature to help users keep track of their tech usage. I encourage everyone to look and ask themselves uh, if they're picking up their phone 10 times an hour or 20 times an hour. And Apple isn't the only developer looking to help people fight tech addiction. In May, Google announced a suite of digital well-being tools for the next version of Android. And Facebook has introduced changes to its news feed, which it claims causes users to spend less time on the site. There are serious ramifications to bad tech habits. A Pew Research study found that nearly half of adults in the U.S. admit to sending or reading texts while driving, and that number increases to 59% for millennials. A Midtown Manhattan pedestrian study found 42% of the people who entered traffic during a don't walk signal were interacting with their device. Tech addiction can also cause poor posture, affecting a person's neck, spine, respiratory functions, and even emotions. We want people to be incredibly satisfied and empowered by our, uh, the devices that we ship, but we've never wanted people to spend a lot of time on them. For today's Health Minute, I'm Reed Binion. 
The manufacturer of the life-saving opioid antidote naloxone is issuing a voluntary recall due to potential loose matter on the syringe plunger. Naloxone is used to reverse a suspected opioid overdose. If an affected syringe is used, the patient could experience a number of symptoms, including irritation, allergic reactions, pulmonary dysfunction, and toxicity. The syringes were distribu distributed to wholesalers, distributors, and hospitals across the country. Well, Uber is reminding users of the extra steps it's taking to improve passenger safety. Users can now share trip details with trusted contacts and call 911 through the app. Uber also said it will rerun background checks on drivers each year. Some of the company's new features also include technology to identify driver offenses as they occur. Uber also added an emergency button for users to quickly share their location with police. Stay with us. Entertainment news is coming up next. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Selfless service is the guiding principle of every Army National Guard soldier. They have a stake in the well-being of the neighborhoods where they live and work. To be an Army National Guard soldier is to serve something greater than yourself. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. We're gonna go out there in the rain. Gonna get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, look at the rain. Okay, quick. Oh yeah, yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. so wet. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. Here's today's job of the day. ABC7 is seeking a photojournalist with experience in news gathering, ENG cameras, and ethics. Visit mysuncoast.com slash job of the day to apply. Outdoor living is one of the greatest perks about living in Florida. So whether this is your style, or this, or maybe this, contact Superior Pools. They've been building pools from Sarasota to Naples since 2001, and they would love to build yours. Famed fashion designer Kate Spade has died. New York police say Spade died in an apparent suicide in her Upper East Side home. Officers say she left a note before hanging herself and was found by her housekeeper. Spade launched her iconic handbag and accessory line in 1993 with her future husband Andy. The couple sold the brand in 2006 and recently launched an accessories company called Francis Valentine, named for Spade's teen daughter. Kate Spade was just 55 years old. Well, with a mind towards change spawned by the hashtag MeToo movement, the Miss America organization announcing today that it will no longer feature a swimsuit competition. ABC's Daria Albinger tells us about the new changes to the century-old beauty pageant. 
After nearly 100 years of swimsuits and evening gowns, Miss America is getting a makeover. We are no longer a pageant. We are a competition. We will no longer judge our candidates on their outward physical appearance. Former Fox News anchor and 1989 Miss America Gretchen Carlson is the organization's new chairwoman. She and the now mostly female leadership of the organization say they want to shift the focus from the contestants' bodies to their brains. So the contest that began as a bathers review will no longer have its participants take part in a swimsuit competition. We've heard from a lot of young women who say, we'd love to be a part of your program, but we don't want to be out there in high heels mm -hmm. in a swimsuit. So guess what? You don't have to do that anymore. You're welcome. Please come join us. In December 2017, the CEO and top executives resigned after leaked emails exposed sexist and lewd comments about past contestants and winners. This is an opportunity to see how women can come together, support each other, rise up, take over the things that they want to see happen, and move forward. In place of the swimsuit portion of the competition, Miss America contestants will now take part in a live interactive session with the judges, and the women won't be forced to wear evening gowns if they don't want Want to. It's going to be what comes out of their mouth mm. that we're interested in. I must stay the talent portion of the show will remain, and with the new look, there's also a new name, Miss America Competition. The changes will start with this year's broadcast on ABC on September 9th. Daria Albinger, ABC News, New York. Ariana Grande is speaking out about her experience with PTSD following the attack at her Manchester concert last year. The pop star released her first new song since the suicide bombing, which killed 22 people. In an interview with British Vogue, she spoke about her experience with anxiety and post-traumatic stress disorder. She says she has always suffered from anxiety, but it, that it was heightened after that attack. And country music queen Dolly Parton is heading to Netflix in 2019. The show will be an eight-part ser scripted series with each episode based around one of her songs. The country western icon will serve as the singer-songwriter, executive producer, and occasional actor on the show. Parton, who is 72 years old, also announced a sequel to her 1980 film, 9 to 5, earlier this year. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back with more news and weather after the break.